Hey guys, welcome back to One All's Pub. Well, look what is gracing the bar top today in the pub. Chris Reeve Knives. If, uh, if you follow my channel at all, you may already know that I am a fan of Chris Reeve Knives and that I own a large uh, Sabenza 21 with the Insingo blade. Um, and when I bought this, when I decided to get a Chris Reeve, I had a little bit of an internal discussion with myself on whether to get this or this. And what is this? Well, you've already read the title, so you know. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen tons of pictures of it this week. It is the Umnumzan. I ended up choosing the Sabenza, uh, and rightly so. I think this is any the start to any good Sabenza, or excuse me, Chris Reeve fetish should be the Sabenza 21. I think this is kind of the uh, the classic one to get. You could argue that the other blade, the clip point blade, is really truly the one to get, but uh, I have kind of a worn cliff and sheep's foot thing, so I picked this one, and uh, for me, that's the one I wanted. But after getting that and experiencing the uh, quality of the uh, Sabenza and Chris Reef products, it gave me a uh, certain appreciation and a hankering for more. Um, I did pick up a small Sabenza 21 as well. Uh, that has since been sold. I have uh, moved that on down the road uh, for various reasons. Um, the knife was fine. It's just the small size just didn't fit me after all. Um, so I, I resold it. And when I did that, I thought to myself, I'll get a, maybe a large 21 or large 25 or an Umdumzan. And I kind of started that internal debate. And I settled in on the Umdumzan. So let's take a look at it. Actually, the box here is empty. I've already pulled the, the contents out. So let's get the contents of the box here in front of the camera. Now this is the new packaging, the new Chris Reeve packaging, and believe it or not, it's kind of somewhat controversial within the uh, Chris Reeve enthusiast community. Uh, they, you know, the old style box is just the old uh, cardboard box, and a lot of people, from what I've been reading online and whatnot, prefer that to this packaging. Uh, to me, it's not a big deal. I, don't, I could care less, frankly, and, and really with this packaging, first of all, it's a little classier, so that's you know, nice, but you get more in this packaging than you get in the old packaging. So, uh, no problem for me. I, I actually like it. So anyway, let's look what we get here. We get the, uh, oops, upside down here. We get the Chris Reeve is great and has won all these, uh, blade show, uh, blade magazine awards. So that's great. A little info there. You get your Chris Reeve registration card, which I have not filled out. You get your sticker of course. You get your birth card or your warranty here, which is the birth card on the back. And you'll see that this one is fresh off the factory, February 28th, 2014. Uh, this actually arrived on St. Patrick's Day. I had a little bit of a luck of the Irish that day. It wasn't um, technically scheduled to arrive until the 19th, but it showed up on the 17th. So winner for me. And it was only 18 days old when it came into my hands. Here's the authorized Chris Reeve dealer that I got it from. I did verify that they were an authorized dealer on the Chris Reeve website before ordering. Here is uh, some information about how sharp the Chris Reeve knives are. Um, hmm, my Sabenza, when I got this, it was, it was acceptably sharp. It was nice and sharp. I didn't have a problem with it. And I bought this used, but the guy, it was like brand new when I got it. And he said that the edge had never really cut anything, and I believe it. Um, it was very sharp, and that's no problem. This one was on. Uh, it's going to hit the wicked edge, trust me. Um, anyway, so that's that, and also some basic information here on the Umdumzan. If you're wanting to hit pause and read that, feel free. I'm not going to take up a lot of time with that. Next, we have the instructions for opening it, because believe it or not, it, there's a kind of a special technique for opening the Umdumzan. Of course, you get your fiber cloth, you know, typical blue Chris Reeve cloth, and you get well, a knife. Lo and behold, awesome. Well, you also get some other things, like I said, with the new packaging. You get some Loctite, and you get some fluorinated grease, and you get some tools. You actually get three tools. One is a uh, 5 64ths for this guy down here, and then you get two 1 8 uh, what are they, hex, I guess, or whatever, um, for uh, the pivot, because you will you might may need to bite the other side, get the other side to, to break loose that lock at the first time instead of just spinning the pivot. Um, so that's kind of cool. They give you really everything you need to take care of the knife, so that's really nice. Now, you got that in the old packaging, too. Uh, so really what's new here are these two items, and that's fine. Um, it, like I said, it comes out a, a nice kind of classy 
presentation, I think. I've already taken my lanyard off, so it's just kind of sitting in here. I'm just not a lanyard guy. So let's get to the knife itself. The Umnum's on. Uh, well, let's just look at the knife. I'm going to go over the knife here with you, tell you what I think of it, and tell you um, kind of how I've experienced it here over the last uh, week or so. And um, I'm going to see where, the, where this leads us. Let's start off with aesthetically. Aesthetically, a very, very handsome knife here. Uh, you have the classic and uh, um, very um, beautiful sandblasted Chris Reeve finish that will get marked up relatively easily. Uh, if I can get my Sabenza here, if you can see some marks on that, you know, that's just, that's just going to happen. Uh, this one hasn't, has held up pretty well. I haven't, I can't, you know, I have a lot of knives, so I don't, it's not like I carry this every day. Um, uh, it is one of my favorites, so it's one of my top five, if you reference that video uh, that I uh, uploaded a few days ago. But you have that really nice uh, Chris Reeve uh, sandblasted titanium finish. I have already put even a mark here on the pocket clip, a couple, which you may or may not see. I mean, it happens, you know. Um, and it's got this nice kind of crosshatch uh, pattern milled into the handle here, which actually offers a bit of, quite a bit of attraction. Uh, the regular Sabenza, or not regular, because there is an actual model called the regular, I'll just say the Sabenza, uh, the 21, has this, this nice and smooth, and I lo tactically I love it. I mean, it feels great. It is a little bit smooth, but the sandblasting gives you some grip. Um, but this really enhances that. I mean, you're, I really feel like I have a lot of good uh, purchase on this. Um, so it's got that nice cross hatching there. Of course, you have your nice big fat one eighth inch pivot uh, here. Um, and the actual pivot itself is way more than an eighth of an inch. I'm not going to disassemble the knife, but it's a stout pivot. I don't know what the uh, dimensions are on it, but it is stout. Um, you have your Chris Reeve logo. You have your glass breaker, which is cool. Nice little. Uh, tacked cool element to it there. You have your Idaho made stamp, which for, again, kind of like the packaging, for some reason people in the Chris Reeve community, enthusiast community, have heartburn over that. I, frankly, I could care less. I, it doesn't bother me in the least. So if it didn't have it, that wouldn't bother me either. I, I don't care. Um, and you have the uh, cool over travel stop here with another Chris Reeve logo. Now this is, you hear this referred to as a lock bar stabilizer, but really it's technically it's not. If you open the blade up, here and you get into a uh, hold on a sec you get into i don't know if you can see it or not you may not be able to nah, i don't think you can so trust me it actually only stabilizes or it's only an over travel stop it only prevents you from over extending the lock bar this way there's no provision to prevent it from being pressed down in like you see on a hinderer a lock bar stabilizer they call it a lock bar stabilizer in the hinderer speak because it truly stabilizes it this way and this way in this case it's really just an over travel stop uh, it just happens to look a lot like, uh, excuse me, a lot like a, a lock bar stabilizer. So people call it that, but technically it's really not. But regardless, this is you're gonna have a you're gonna have a nearly an impossible time driving that uh, <laughs> that that lock bar down to to bend it, and you frankly have a nearly impossible time getting it out here to overextend it too. And this particular lock bar on the Umnum's on, at least on mine, is pretty stout. Uh, it's got a lot of. Uh, a spring to it so you're you're really having to you'd have to really make a concerted effort to damage it um but that's there for you know that that, that opportunity to do so um in case that should ever come up you that at least save your lock bar and prevent it so and it's just a nice little decorative element I, as you know if again if you watch my channel you know i'm a big hinderer fan so uh i kind of like that kind of dresses up that side uh, in an otherwise you know Chris Reeve has a, a pretty sterile look to him. You know, the Sabenza is a pretty sterile approach. And the Umnum Zahn's a kind of a dressed-up version uh, of one of their products. And so, uh, you know, I kind of dig I kind of dig those things. You know, I like that crosshatch, and I like the uh, like that over-travel stop. Um, it does, now, the, back to the pivot really quickly. This is a newer Umnum Zahn, so it does not have the larger decorative pivot that they originally came out with. They also originally didn't have the over-travel stop. Um, some people prefer that bigger uh, decorative pivot. It took a special tool to, you know, uh, get it to open or, you know, to get it loose. Uh, I prefer this one, frankly. I just, I like this. In, in the case of this, I prefer the simple look. Um, but I understand why people like the fancy one. That's cool. Um, I had opportunities to buy some used ones like that, but I, I really chose to uh, to stick with the, or to get a new one and stick with the this newer pivot, which uh, kind of more aesthetically clean, in my opinion. But anyway, um so you also notice that it's got dual thumb lugs with little polyurethane, I think they are, uh, O-rings. Um, 
and they act as a because the car, excuse me, because the uh, knife does not have a stop pin. They act as a uh, much like a hinderer. They act as the stop pin against the friend. They they, they do dual function here as thumb lugs and as uh, stop pins, and and st stabilize the uh, the hand the blade and the handle and give you that classic Chris of excellent lockup. And this does have all of those excellent lockups. I don't even hear my dog barking out there. Apparently there's a cat in the backyard. I think he's been giving me grief as I've been trying to film this. Um, anyway, uh, so it's kind of, that's certainly different from the Sabenza. The Sabenza has the uh, stop pin here. Um, so that makes this knife, uh, if you look at a Sabenza here, you have one, two, three points of contact. Uh, with the Umnum, you just have the two points of contact. Does that make the um, Umnum's on less sturdy, less durable, less hard use than this one, than the Sabenza. Uh, you know, one could make an argument there. I think that the pivot being large is, is and, and the dual lugs is considered compensation for the lack of that. Uh, technically speaking, would this one maybe have more? Maybe. I Honestly, I don't know the engineering behind it. And it, it could be that this one is stronger. It, it kind of impulse tells me that this one is probably... Actually, with its three points of contact, maybe a little stronger. But I think we're talking about levels at which, let's say you needed something, you needed something to be able to withstand a thousand pounds of uh, force, and you overbuilt it to where it could take two thousand pounds of force. Well, you've completely overbuilt it past what its spec really requires. Let's say you make take something else and you build it, and it takes nineteen hundred pounds of force when you only need it to take a thousand. Either way, you're so far over what is required that I think it's kind of a moot point. I think it's really, this is just wanting to uh, take a different approach to knife making instead of making it like the Sabenza, they wanted to do something different. So they gave it a bigger pivot, some dual lugs, no stop pin, pinned it together here. I don't think you can say that this knife is not stout. I mean, it certainly, uh, certainly feels so. And I don't really know of any reports of people having problems with these knives not uh, not performing or, or failing or being you know hard use failures or anything like that. I just I think this knife has got plenty of uh, structural integrity. Um, that said, you know there is kind of this this impression that the Umnumzan is the beefy you know tactical hard use knife in the Chris Reeve lineup, uh, and I'm not sure that that's actually the case. I don't know that it's any more than this. Maybe it's less. Maybe it's more. I don't know. They're so close that I think it's it's a moot discussion. But I really don't think it's meant to be the ultimate uber strong, uber tough knife that people seem to think it is. It is plenty strong. I don't deny that in the least. I'm just saying I think that uh, I think that that's kind of a a a response that that enthusiasts and knife owners have have kind of. Uh, come up with. I think that's kind of driven by the, the, the knife community, not so much by the intention that Chris Reeve uh, had in making it. Uh, if you watch the, it's ironic, I had, I got this knife this week, the Rob over at the Apostle P channel got in one for review as a guest blade. And uh, so we've been commiserating back and forth uh, via text and whatnot on this knife. Um, so it's, <laughs> we, we, for some reason we kind of seem to have this CRK karma thing going on. Um, I got my original Sabenza about the same within a day or two of him getting his. So, I mean, we've just kind of had this Sabenza and CRK kind of thing going for whatever reason. And um, and as we were talking about this, I, I kind of expressed to him and he, if you, I'll actually give you a link to his video review uh, up, up here in the, up here in the corner. Uh, he did a, an excellent video review today. Uh, earlier today, I watched it and um, he, he borrowed a, uh, a, a, analogy that that we had talked about back and forth this week and that is that i consider this to be more crk's sports car uh whereas this is their sport utility this is a four by four sport utility that'll do anything you ask it to do and it's kind of the the brute of the bunch um if you want to say that uh it's fully capable of doing lots of things really well and you're you've got a good solid performer here here you have something that's overbuilt in some areas a big old pivot and in other areas maybe you know it's not it's from the standpoint that it doesn't have a stop pin instead it's using the dual thumb lugs and so it, that stop pin while these are excellent for blade um you know structure and for, for keeping lock up really good um you you're 
you don't have it pinned together in an, an additional, an, excuse me, an, an additional location holding the frame together. Uh, you know, so I, again, I, 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 so to me, this is really just kind of like a sports car. Um, it would be a, a not necessarily a, a muscle car, but a sports car. Think Corvette. Think um, Porsche. Think uh, I think that Rob at the Apostle P used um, an Aston Martin as an as a example, and that's a good one. I had personally hadn't thought of that one. Uh, um, I I'm kind of a more of a uh, Corvette guy in, in that regard, so I was thinking it's kind of their Corvette. Um, and you know, a Corvette is built to do uh, is, is overbuilt to do things. You know, you to, certain things. It's got a tough engine. It's got tough transmission. It's got tough suspension. But yet, the body's made of fiberglass. So the body's not particularly tough. Now, I'm not saying that this has got a fiberglass body. Obviously, it doesn't. But my point is, is just that that car, the like a Corvette, is built to be a, a high performance machine. And it's overbuilt in certain areas and not in other areas, not because it, they, they want it to be weak, but just because it's not necessary there. And my point is, I don't think this was trying to be the ultimate hard-use tactical knife. I think this is trying to be a, a sports car of a knife. It's really just trying to be really good at what it does and what it's intended to do. Now, it certainly fills a tactical role. It could be that and no problem at all. It's just... Uh, not necessarily meant to be the, the workhorse of the Chris Reeve line. I think that's the Sabenza, and always will be probably in its various iterations. Anyway, I don't want to get bogged down in that, and I already have. So let's keep moving. The knife itself is, is a little bit unique uh, in that it, while it is a frame lock or a Reeve integral lock, uh, because he is the guy that invented the particular lock type, um, it has a. It's a little different because it actually has a ceram, uh, excuse me, a ceramic, a ceramic ball in here that uh, works as the lockup interface. Uh, instead of like a steel lockup, it has a uh, you know like a steel interface like you find on a lot of flippers nowadays, like the Domino, for example. Um, instead of a stainless steel interface or, or, or um, insert, it has a ceramic ball here, and it does dual duty. It's kind of cool. It, it rides on the uh, blade tang and, and it gives you your lockup, but it also that same ball because it sits in this lock bar slightly off center. So it sits a little bit proud on this side and a little bit proud on this side so that it also is your detent ball. So one thing doing uh, both, uh, both functions. So that's pretty innovative uh, and it certainly gives you a really good lockup. Like I said, typical Chris Reeve lockup here. Um, let's look at the blade, the blade, the blade, the blade is what really drew me to this knife. I love this blade hollow ground, um, I think probably a little thinner, excuse me, thicker behind the edge than a Sabenza, at least than my, I should say an Insingo, really. I am assuming that the uh, the drop point and the Insingo are the same here, but maybe they aren't. I don't know. I don't uh, have one here to compare, but I would say my Insingo feels a little bit, just a little bit thinner behind the edge, but it's thin. Um, the edge itself is convex and um, not particularly sharp, actually. It barely, and I mean barely, raggedly cuts phone book paper. Um, you know, and that's right out of the box. So it does slice well. I mean, I use it in the kitchen a little bit too and cut up some tomatoes and some onions, and it slices just well. I mean, it's sharp by anybody's, you know, definition, unless you're a kind of guy that sharpens your knives to stupid levels like I do uh, on the wicked edge. So it will definitely uh, get to the wicked edge. But anyway, back to the blade itself. I just love the shape of this blade. I love the uh, the dippity do here on the uh, top with all the little... Uh, cool work here on top the, the the thumb rest here is awesome you're get fantastic uh milling here or not milling but grinding that, that provide you with your very cool ultimately cool harpoon swedge here and it is if i can get the camera to focus oh, oh, that camera always wants to focus on burton that was dang hollywood types Always got to have the camera on them. All right, you can see that that is actually done after the fact because it's sat in the ground, so they must stonewash these first. And then they grind this. Uh, Rob, the one he had, had a little bit of a burr here. Mine does not, so that must have just been a QC fail on their part. Um, but you could knock that down really easy if you had to. But uh, it is just beautifully done. And the knife, or excuse me, the blade itself is just fantastic. It does have a finer tip than a uh, Sabenza 21, at least than the than the clip point version of the, the Sabenza 21. When it comes to the Insingo 
Yeah, the Insingo gives up some gives up some meat at the end of the tip for so it actually might be it might be a little thicker than the Insingo. So I don't know. I don't think either one, either this or the or or the umnum here are in any danger of being broken as long as you don't abuse your knife. If you're trying to pry, you know, paint cans open with your knife, then and you break the tip, you probably deserve to have a broken tip. The the drop point is thicker, um, and uh, but so for ultimate tactical hard use, again, there's kind of a clue that maybe that's not necessarily the ultimate goal of this knife. Uh, it's trying to be a a really good piercer here. Uh, again, again, sports cars like this is like a fast knife. It's not necessarily a Humvee or a tactical knife or something. Like this. this is a fast knife. This is a sports car or a or a, an F-16 Fighting Falcon. I mean, that's you know this thing's meant to be fast and deadly and uh, you know in fighting context, obviously. Um, so it's not necessarily meant to be a you know a tank. I don't think, but it's got very svelte lines and very sexy lines. Again, sports car. Sorry, that's just that's just how I see it. Um, Back to my gorgeous blade here. Uh, so you got that really cool swedge, which actually this little harpoon thing would really work nicely. I've heard other people say this in reviews, and, and I think it's an excellent point, so I'm going to repeat it. would work good for opening boxes where you had something inside the box that you wanted to be sure you didn't cut. I think you're just going to cut the tape on it. I mean, that would be enough to, to, to peel through packing tape or something like that. If you had clothes or something like that that you thought were really close to the surface of the box and you did not want to uh, you know, lay open the... Uh, the the item beneath the tape so that would work for that it would also work really good for like a fire starter uh, as a ferris rod for you know striking to try to get a fire going the sabenza uh, both the, the in single and the rig in the uh, drop point have this beautiful rounded spine which is gorgeous and feels really nice tactically feels nice or tactic tac, tac, tactily tactility i don't know feels good um but it doesn't really work great for for using the to you know get a fire going if you had a like a ferris rod or something. And this would certainly do that job. Now on the in single you do have this down here. You have the swedge that's cut into the top of that, so you'd probably do that with that too. But because of the way that point drops, it would be a little less easy. This certainly you know you just go scrape 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 and you get her going. So a uh, couple of good items there, or, or you know, a couple of good ways you could use that. Uh, that harpoon tip, uh, just a gorgeous blade though. Just man, and that was why it was really when I was looking to get my very first Chris Reeve item. I love Warnies and I love this harpoon, so I was really battling between boy, which one of these do you know do I really ultimately want? Um, ultimately, the Warnie won out as it quite often does in my case, but uh, now I've come back around to this and I am digging this. All right, let's talk about the handle a little bit. I talk, told you, you know, what's made of it's six. Eight, a L four V titanium or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got that cross hatch on it and blah, 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 this and blah, 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 that let's talk about, well, first let's talk about the clip. It's got the great Sabenza clip, which I love dearly. Uh, some people have said it rides too close to the, to the, um, edge here of the frame. Uh, Actually, and, and it does, it's right up against the edge, there's no doubt. I haven't noticed that being a problem in the least in my pocket, so I don't know what people are complaining about. It just happens to be where it's at. Really, it's no different than this one. It's in the exact same location on the Sabenza, you know, from, from, from the, the spine of the handle down. It's the exact same location. I don't think, I think if you me measured that, you'd find those two to be exactly the same. The difference here is, is that the Sabenza has a wider lock bar, so that's why it has a little bit of room in from the edge of the frame, whereas this is just right on the edge. Regardless, I, it, again, has no bearing on 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 the, the how the knife carries or how the knife feels in the hand. It does not create a hot spot that I can feel in any way, shape, or form. So bends the feel okay. Let's just do it. Yeah, it feels fine to me. Uh, as you hold the knife, it just sits right between those two fingers. It's just. Not a problem. Now, let's get to holding that knife. Let's look at some ergonomics on this thing. The handle is one of the true joys of this knife. It's a little bit more ergonomic in that, that you know, a Sabenza kind of has that, a little bit of that kind of coffin shape where it kind of flares at the end. It's got a little bit of a sway back thing here, um, and it's real straight, which is fine. The Umnum has got a little bit of a taper, a little bit of a more organic shape. Not a bunch, not like a, not like a, uh, let me pull it out here. Not like you find on it, on it, on it. Hinder XM18, by the way, I picked up this uh, new Digicam scale, or not new, used Digicam scale in the in the Cove on the USN last week. Very nice, too. Um, 
But there, there you can see uh, it's definitely got a ton of uh, organic drop to it here, and it really fits into the hand nicely. Now, the uh, this, the Umnum Zahn is not quite that dramatic, but it definitely is more so than you find on the Sabenza. So it does kind of have a natural feel in the palm, a little bit more natural maybe, or not natural is the right word, but less linear. This has a re this feels good too once you kind of get used to it, but this has a little bit less linear feel to it. Fits in the hand really well. You just settle right in to here, and you get your jimping on top, which is just like some uh, older Umnum's had a, a chunkier jip, uh, jimping, and this the newer ones here have just kind of the regular old... Uh, Focus on the jimping, please. There we go. Oh, no, come on, Bert. Quit being a quit being a camera hog, you dirty dog. <laughs> there we go. It's just like uh, it's just like Samantha jumping. The blade stock is a touch wider. It's like I don't know one. 140,000 to, to 125,000 on the Sabenza, so you might get a little more purchase just because you have a little thicker blade you're dealing with here, so you have a little bit more contact, but not enough to, to really worry about or tell the difference, I don't think. Um, anyway, so that you get this great, you know, grip right here where you just hangs on to that perfect in the saber grip. You've just got it set up, and uh, reverse grip is fantastic. Your pinky just rides right in that little spot right there, and the, you got these kind of these little dual cutouts. You have one, and then you have the first one for the index finger, uh, or the pinky if you're doing reverse grip, and then you have these other two scallops. And boy, everything just that rides right between those two fingers. It's just perfect. Unlike the, like the Curtis F3, if you watched my review of that a few months ago, how that had that one big cutout and it would ride right smack dab in the middle of the hand, showing that it was just it was like this, showing that the ergonomics just weren't quite right. Here it's just perfect. You can see how that's just perfect. So well thought out uh, handle here for that purpose. Another thing I really like about this though is that, uh, well of course you can do this in that I love that scallop cutout here for the thumb for detailed work and whatnot. That's just awesome. You can also choke up a little bit. Uh, my finger, I think I could do it. Um, that could be, if that was just, man, a 16th of an inch more of a sharpening notch there, you probably would be, I probably would be much more comfortable. Uh, as the blade is now, as I said, it's not real blazing sharp, so it's not a big deal. After I get the sucker off the wicked edge, I'm not sure I want my finger up there grazing up against that, and I think that will, uh, will get me. Um, but you can certainly just choke up on it like this, and man, I love, that is an awesome grip right there. I love the way that feels. I just love that, and that's just kind of worry stone cool right there. You just kind of rub that. It feels awesome. Anyway, another thing I like about this handle is you can also choke back on it, meaning that you could come back here. Instead of being up here, you could come back here on this side of the uh, the lock bar, you know, not cut out, but the, the lock bar tab here, and you can hold it lower on the handle and still keep four fingers fully on the knife. You still have a nice, because now your fingers are like this, so that little peak is between these two fingers. You still have a nice hold. You're still on the jimping. And here if you needed to do longer sweeping cuts or you know cut a lot of cardboard and you wanted to get more leverage to cut through, uh, you got a really nice handle that allows you to, to a, a variety of different ways to hold it. So really an excellently designed handle from an ergonomics perspective and from a use perspective. Really, really like the handle a lot. Um, let's uh, talk about uh, the lock bar for a second. In researching this knife, like anybody, um, I have, uh, before buying it, watched a bunch of videos. And one of the things I saw people talk about was, was this way that this is kind of chamfered over here and the edge of the, of the lock bar here. People have said that they, they think that's backwards, that this should be on this side, allow you, allowing you, and the only knife I have that really shows that is this uh, Boker Quiken. You see how that's chamfered there, and it kind of allows you to come in and get your thumb in there kind of nicely and push the lock bar aside. Uh, and that's true. That is a uh, that is a very comfortable way to, to do that. And it's, it looks aesthetically pleasing, and it's very comfortable for the thumb to fit in there. I've heard some people say that that's way, the way that should be. That should be on this side so that you have a little bit nicer. Because this little ridge here is a little bit rough on the thumb as you're first getting used to it. Um, but it's not bad, but it just takes a little bit of time. Uh, and they think that's backwards. I disagree because that's not its purpose. First of all, if you look at um, a Sabenza versus this, they both, you know, you're, you're a, a accessing this lock bar on a straight edge on the inner side of this lock bar on both of these knives. It's the exact same. Now, the Sabenza does have a cut down, whereas the Umnumzan has a 
tab up um, because it doesn't have as big of a, a you know thumb access point here. It doesn't have that cutout like you can get into on the Sabenza. Um, this chamfer here in this little bit of an area is, is much shallower, so they've built this up and given you almost a little nick in there that you can kind of get some grip on. Um, that, but my point is, is that that straight part of the inner part of the frame is the same that you're accessing on this knife or this knife. Um, so that's completely within the normal you know, mindset of, of a Chris Reeve knife. This is actually, in my opinion, an ergonomic uh, element to the, to the knife and to the handle. Because when you're holding this knife, if this edge wasn't chamfered like this, you would actually have a hot spot built up right here. Now they might have rounded it off a little bit like you do. Like you see here, they got these nice um, indexing done here, the way they, they cut a chamfer here along the, uh, along the outside of this, and that helps to reduce that here. Now this knife, on the, the Umnum, does not have that. It's actually much straighter. It has a little bit of a chamfer here, but very little. So they cut in a bunch more right here so that this little tab fits, if I can show it to you, right perfectly in the crease of your finger and does not create a hot spot. If that was sitting over, you know, what is that about? Eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an, uh, not, not even a quarter of an inch, not not not, not three sixteenths. I don't know, eighth of an inch or so, sixteenth of an inch, whatever. That would actually hit you in the finger right about here. Um, but the way that they've chamfered that in, they've given you a nice little perfectly pl placed uh, place to put your uh, the crease of your finger. So that's actually an ergonomic element, I'm very confident, because it really makes this a comfortable grip without that being a hot spot, because it just sits right down in the crease of the, the fat of your finger there. Um, so anybody that thinks that that's backwards, I, I, I think they're missing the point of why that uh, exists in the first place. Wow, what a fantastic knife. Now, I said I would go over this with you really quick, and I'm trying to wrap this up, because I know this is running way longer than I planned. Here's instructions on how to open the dang thing. Apparently, either they were smart enough to realize that they needed to give people instructions or they re received some complaints over time, like, how do you open this thing? So they felt the need to give us this. And what they're showing here is run your finger along the chamfer, come in contact with it, and then just flip it around. What, the, uh, what they're telling you is to do this. Don't come at it like a Sabenza. Sabenza, you kind of come from the top, you press down on the thumb stud, and then you do this big sweeping arc to come out and around. That's how a Sabenza is open. Now, you can flick them open, of course, right? No problem. Um, sorry, Chris. Uh, but uh, you can, you know, you, that, that's the typical way a Sabenza works. You can access it and you kind of come around the corner with it. You know, you big, sweeping, you know, crescent shape. Here, it's much more direct. You just slide up the chamfer and it comes right around the frame. Just zippity doo dah. I kind of liken this to, since I'm doing car analogies here, if you guys are older guys, remember, or guys, younger guys that are into older cars, remember the um, old four speeds from the 60s and 70s muscle cars? Remember the old Super T10, Borg Warner Super T10 with the stick shift and the big long throws on that sucker? That's kind of this. This is the Borg Warner Super T10. Great fun, you know, cars that have those things are awesome to, to drive and fun to play with, but they're, you know, the throws are, are big and long and, and uh, not particularly. Um, economic in their approach to, to shifting. Well, the Sabenza is kind of that way too. This is more like a Borg Warner T56, like you would find in a, in a, in a later model. Like, let's say if this is a 1977 Trans Am. Ah, get it, Trans Am, get the reference. This is a Trans Am with the uh, big old Borg Warner four-speed shifter in it. This is a 2002 Trans Am with the T56 and a very snick little, or quick little snick of the, uh, Short throw shifter, bing. That's kind of what this is, and it's another reason why I kind of liken this to a sports car, because uh, it's just got this really quick little snip, and boop, you're open. Um, of course, it can be flicked open too, like the uh, Chris Re or like the uh, Umnum's on. Sorry, Chris. Uh, and it does have those little o rings that are meant to soften. Now, when you're flicking it open, you don't necessarily hear that that's any quieter. It's really quieter when you're doing this. You're going very quietly, and you can get it to open just very. There's a muted kind of sound. I don't know if that comes across on, on the... Uh, and sometimes if you do it just right, it hardly make a noise at all. And I'm guessing that's for those super ninja tactical moments where you're sneaking up on the enemy and you don't have your knife deployed and you need to deploy it just before you kill him. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of a neat thing. Um, you, know, you, you can take those O-rings off and it doesn't affect uh, the performance of the knife. 
And I even heard other, uh, I've seen and heard that they sell different colors. Not Chris Reeve doesn't, but other people sell different colors. So you can dress your knife up with different color ones. I've taken the uh, lanyard off and put a, some blue paracord in here. Um, and uh, yeah, focus, yeah, you piece of crap. Focus. You can see a blue blob of nothing else. So anyway, if I could find some blue, little blue uh O-rings, I might do that. Maybe not. We'll see. I don't know. Um, anyway, any rate, um, it is just real. You just come along the chamfer and just boop, pop it open very quick, like snicking your way through a, a, a modern gearbox as opposed to the old Borg Warner Super T10. Bang. Anyhow, that's why they give us these special instructions just to make sure we understand how this is supposed to operate. Now, some people can complain about that and say, oh, it shouldn't be that way. You should, you know, it should be a little more straightforward because it does take a little bit of a learning curve. It does. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that. Frankly, if all knives operated the same way, it would be boring. And why have multiple knives? I mean, the, the fact that they all do things a little differently is part of the fun. It's kind of like with guns. I mean, handguns. Let's take revolvers. Take a Smith & Wesson and a Ruger. Uh, if you have a Smith & Wesson and you want to release the cylinder you push in on the thumb pad you know on the, on the on the thumb release and you open it up if you have a ruger you push down on a button and open it up is one right or wrong no it's just two different approaches to accomplishing the same thing if you have both guns you just need to know which one you're using you need to use them both enough that when that one's in your hand you have the training to do it um that said knives are kind of similar i mean if you just carried one knife i only ever carried this knife i'd be that's all i'd know and that's all i'd ever do if i only ever carried this knife that's all i'd know and that's all i'd ever do if i only ever carried this knife it would be a totally different approach to it so but we don't only just carry one knife we all like to carry lots of knives right here's the four i got out for this demonstration you know for this video so i need to learn different ways to handle all of these this certainly doesn't open like this or this or this or this or that you get the point so it doesn't bother me in the least. I, actually, it's, I kind of like the fact that it's a little bit different and that knives themselves are, you have a little more variety. Anyhow, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm probably at about the five hour mark, it feels like. So if you guys are a fan of Chris Reeve products, then you uh, should look into an Omnimazon. It is a really cool knife. And I think that you will find yourself uh, enjoying Owning one of these, if you already have a Sabenza. If you don't have a Sabenza, then yeah, probably start with the Sabenza. I'd have, I would probably tell people that. Uh, if you have a Sabenza and are looking at getting another Sabenza, um, I don't think you can go wrong by stepping out to the Omnimazon. It's a cool, um, unique animal in and of itself. Don't compare it to a Sabenza. I did plenty of that today here, but I don't think, I think it stands on its own merits. I think it's just a different knife. It's supposed to be a different knife. It's not supposed to be an improved Sabenza. They didn't quit making the Sabenza when they started this up, or when they started making the Omnimazon. And they've started making a new Sabenza 25, and they still haven't quit making this, the 21. So I don't think any of these are designed to replace the other. They're just different. And different is cool. It's variety is the spice of life. So anyway, that's one all two cents. I hope I covered everything. Keep the change. Slauncha.